Good morning, Councilmember Barron here. Um, am I listed on this bill as a sponsor? Uh, checking now. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. At this time, will Sergeant Hope and Sergeant Biondo please start their recordings? Uh, Councilmember Barron, I don't see your name. Okay, would you please add me? Sure, I'll make sure. Billy. Thank you. Appreciate it. Councilmember, Councilmember Barron, Billy Martin. Uh, a little while ago, Indigo sent me an email. I, I put you on there. Oh, right okay, great. Thank you. I, it, it's not on. Yeah. Okay, I update. appreciate it. Thanks. I put see, you on a little, a little, a little, yeah, you're good. You see recording started. All recording started. Thank you. And at this time, will Sergeant Hope please start with his opening statement? Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to the New York City Council Remote Hearing on Education. For security purposes, will everyone please turn on their video at this time? I repeat, for security purposes, will everyone please turn on their video at this time? Thank you. To minimize disruption, please place all electronic devices, devices to vibrate or silent mode. Thank you. Chair Trigger, we are ready to begin. Thank you. And good morning. I am council member Mark Traeger, chair of the education committee. We are convened here this morning for a vote on a resolution, which I am the sponsor of, resolution 1410A, calling upon the Department of Education to only open school buildings that have met the health and safety standards prescribed in the UFT 50 item checklist and implement a medically recommended mandatory randomized COVID-19 testing program for adults and students as agreed upon by the administration and the labor organizations representing school personnel, including UFT, CSA, and DC 37. I now like to recognize the members of the education committee who are, who are here. Um, and what I have so far, council members Barron, Drum, Lander, Ulrich, Rodriguez, uh, Cornegy, Rodenchik, Ambry Samuel, uh, Borelli, Salamanca, Rose, and Brennan. Uh, we are currently in the midst of a global pandemic with approximately 30 million confirmed COVID-19 cases worldwide and nearly 1 million deaths. The US has been hit especially hard with over six and a half million confirmed cases and close to 200,000 deaths. In New York State alone, there have been more than 30,000 deaths, the majority of which were in New York City. Within the school system, 79 DOE employees have died from COVID-19 related illnesses as of June 22nd, 2020, including 31 teachers, 28 paraprofessionals, five food service staffers, four central office employees, three school counselors, two administrators, two school aides, two facility staffers, one parent coordinator, and one school computer technology specialist. This number does not include other members of the school community who are not DOE employees, including bus drivers, school safety agents, crossing guards, and others who lost their lives to coronavirus related illness. And of course, these numbers do not reflect the untold number of students who have lost family members and other loved ones. It is no wonder then that many students, parents and school staff are concerned about the safety of the school buildings and health protocols that the city is employing in, in the pursuit of reopening schools for in-person instruction for the 2020-21 school year. Just two weeks ago on September 3rd, 2020, this committee held a remote hearing on resolution 1410A. At this hearing, we heard compelling testimony from union leaders as well as students, parents, educators, and other stakeholders, all of whom voiced grave concerns about the city's school reopening plans. Students and teachers alike expressed fear that the return to school buildings without adequate safety measures threatened not only their health, but the health and lives of vulnerable family members. 
Most of those who testified expressed a total lack of trust in DOE's ability to provide an adequate supply of PPE and cleaning supplies to schools. Other major issues included concerns about COVID-19 testing and tracing protocols and the lack of adequate ventilation in many school buildings and classrooms. As a matter of fact, one of the leaders in the MLK campus in Manhattan testified at the hearing uh, that the toilet paper test, which has now become famous in New York, was not new to her school because the school has had no windows in classrooms, broken ventilation systems, and because of our hearing and our advocacy, we, we forced the DOE uh, to, to move kids and staff out of that building because it was just not safe. So it's important that we, we continue to, to provide a platform for educators and, and, and parents and students to speak up on the concerns they have about the mayor's inadequate plan. As I pointed out then, the initial plans put forward by the de Blasio administration were not developed in collaboration with those directly impacted, teachers, administrators, students, parents in the wider school communities. It is no wonder then that, that stakeholders lack confidence in the administration's school reopening plans. This resolution reflects those stakeholder concerns. Resolution 1410A calls on DOE to only open school buildings that have met all the health and safety standards and benchmarks prescribed in, in the UFT uh, checklist and implement a medically uh, recommended mandatory randomized COVID-19 testing program for staff and students uh, across our school system, again, as agreed upon by the administration and UFT, CSA, and DC 37. Only when the highest safety standards are met can we even think of asking our school staff and students to return to in-person uh, school instruction. I'd like to thank uh, the committee staff, Malcolm Buterhorn, Jan Atwell, Kalima Johnson, Chelsea Batemore, uh, Macis uh, Sarkissian, uh, and also want to thank my staff, Anna Scaife and Vanessa Ogle, and I will now turn to the clerk to call the vote. Good morning. <clears throat> William Martin, committee clerk, will call vote committee on education. Resolution 1410, Chair Traeger. I vote aye. Barron. I vote aye. Carnegie. Aye. Drum. Aye. Lander. Lander. Vote yes. Vote yes. Levin. Levin. I vote aye. I vote aye. Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Aye. Gordenchik. With thanks to the chair for his leadership on this very important issue, aye. Salamanca. I vote aye. Ampri Samuel. Good morning, everyone. I vote aye. Brannon. Aye. Kalos. I'll come back, Council Member. Council Member Ulrich. I vote aye. Borelli. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'd like my vote to be recorded as a no uh, solely because of the uh, notion that we should be testing children without the consent of their parents. I, I find it very difficult to digest the fact that five men in a room made decisions affecting the medical testing of students 
without any representation from parents uh, as we move forward. I want to point out that currently on the CDC's website, it says universal SARS-CoV-2 testing of all students and staff in school settings has not been systematically studied. Uh, therefore, CDC does not recommend universal testing of all students and staff. Furthermore, the New York State Education Department's own website says it strongly recommends that schools comply with CDC guidance and not conduct COVID-19 testing or require testing or antibody testing of students or staff members. The decision of whether tests need to be conducted should be determined by a healthcare provider. That's coming straight from the CDC and from the New York State Education Department. Uh, so th though I support just about every other component of this resolution, uh, I want to really record my objection uh, and say that as a public school parent, my son won't be tested by the same group of people that seem incapable uh, of opening schools and managing schools and managing remote learning. So I'm sorry for the long rant, uh, but thank you, I vote no. Council member Kalos. I think he dropped off, Billy. Oh. Okay, double check, he was present for a moment. Okay, by vote of 13 in the affirmative, one in the negative and no abstentions, the item has been adopted by the committee. I, I want to just, uh, I, I appreciate my colleague, Councilman Borelli's uh, very, um, you know, important uh, words and his, expressing his very important concerns. Him and I did have a conversation. Um, and I just want to uh, share the latest information that I have with regards to the testing protocol uh, on a call that I had with DOE officials recently. It is my understanding that there will not be testing done inside school buildings. It's also my understanding that um, uh, no testing can occur of, of, a, of a child uh, in, in, as far as you know, going back into the school building unless parents sign off on a consent form. And if they don't sign a consent form, then the DOE moves them to remote. Um, the issue I, I believe that is very valid, and there's a number of issues here, but is that the DOE has not really communicated that very well to parents and stakeholders. And it's, there's a lot of confusion and, and ambiguity around those protocols, but it's my understanding as of this moment, uh, and things could change, but as of this moment, um, there will not be testing done inside schools. Um, and uh, it, they are collecting consent forms, and if they don't provide a consent form, then a child will be moved to remote, um, and a staff member will be placed on unpaid leave. That is my understanding at this time, but I do appreciate my colleague, Councilman Borelli, sharing those concerns. Thank you very much. Chair, can you close us out of the vote, please? Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but uh, Councilmember Kalos is back on. Yes. Yes. I vote aye on all. Thank you, Councilmember. Vote is now 14 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstention. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is Councilman Perkins. I want to vote. Councilman Perkins, this is the Committee on Education. Okay. So, if, if, if I, am I allowed to vote? If so, I want to vote aye on all. Uh, we're just wrapping up the Committee on Education vote, Councilman Perkins, and then we'll uh, move on to the next committee. So, just bear with us, please. Thank you very much. And Chair Trager, if we can gavel out this vote, I think uh, we're done. I thank my colleagues and the staff for their work and for their time. 